My name is Caleb Polvo, and for my nine-week project, I decided that I would study the history of the vibraphone. It all started back over 100 years ago, in 1916, when an instrument maker named Hermann Winterhoff was trying to create an artificial human voice by hooking up a motor with cover discs to a three-octave steel marimba. The instrument started being marketed by the Leedy Manufacturing Company in 1924. However, it wasn't even close to what we now call vibraphone. There were two key differences, namely, there wasn't a pedal mechanism, which allows the player to dampen the instrument, and also, it had steel bars rather than aluminum bars, which gave more of a harsh tone. It achieved a degree of popularity, after it was used in several solos, but it never really got the attention of everyone, as the Viber Harp did. The Viber Harp was made by J.C. Deegan in 1927. However, it made the bars from aluminum, adjusted the tonality of the bars and the dimensions to make it so it's a lot more mellow, and it also introduced a foot control damper bar, allowing musicians to play it with more expression. It became so much more popular than the Lady design that it became the template for all the instruments now called the vibraphone. There was a lot of confusion between vibraphone and viper harp, so the players just decided to call the instrument vibes and themselves vibists. It stuck with professional players and is still used to this day. In 1924, public radio was introduced to the sound of the vibraphone, and it quickly became popular among musicians, especially in the jazz genre. One of the great players in the jazz genre was Lionel Hampton. Lionel Hampton was born in 1909, and he first played the instrument in 1929 in the Hype Band. Soon thereafter, he brought the vibes to a recording session with Louis Armstrong, where he debuted his own version of Memories of You. By 1942, he became a well-known musician due to his biggest recorded hit, Flying Ho. By 1945, many movie and theater ensembles were incorporating the vibraphones into their performances. Unfortunately for the instrument, by the 1960s the popularization died down, and it never fully achieved the same level of status as his cousins, the xylophone marimba and glockenspiel. It since has mainly been used in small jazz ensembles, percussion ensembles, and also marching bands. Also in the 60s, the vibraphone underwent some changes as to how the vibrato worked. They ended up putting a mic inside each resonator and joined it with a magnetic stick, which didn't give as pure of a sound as was intended. This issue wasn't really fixed until somebody decided to put piezoelectric chips, whatever that means, in the bars for clear amplification. After that, the problem was solved. <laughs>